His lifestyle became a witness for him. How he lived was a witness for him. He's saying something about that. Look at to see how they can still 
killed and destroyed. So they know, okay, he's he about to go this way. He's about to go see us. All that he know, he get married. <laughs> he know that in his wife, because he got 10 wives. Woman, where are your husband? Because I have many husbands. Well said, my daughter. Well said, yes. <laughs> the thing is, because of our desires, just like how the serpent was able to manipulate Eve, mm -hmm. the enemy knows our desires sometimes because of our actions. Mm -hmm. We keep going to the same well. If you keep showing up at the same well with no container, what do you go to a well for? Okay, you go to walk, yeah, to get some safe water. I'm going to help my brother out. <laughs> if you go to a well, you go in there for some water. How are you going to show up at the well with no container to give up water? So what do you really go in there for? Your actions show your desire. Say, sir. You show up with no container at the water. Jesus said, Look, if you only knew who was talking to you. <laughs> Anywhere, but are you ready? 
Are you equipped? Are yeah. you putting on the full armor? Are you using what God has given to you? My Lord, my Lord. Let's continue. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. With what? Why is he here? So you know what? Okay, all right. 
Yeah, send them, send them, let, let them be out there, send them away. Let her smell, let them just smell. Look, I was going out there with mama just now, and I just smelled the wind blew and I smelled mangoes. I look over and I say, Miss Keisha, she got mangoes in her car. That's what I call mama. And so said, so I'm done. I went over there like, she got a whole network of mangoes. I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking true. <laughs> Listen, the enemy is strategic. He watches move because of him not being where he was supposed to be, having our idle mind. So now we give the devil room to play. If he was at war where he was supposed to be, his mind would have been occupied. But here comes the idle mind. So what he does? Let her go take a shower, let that aroma come upstairs. Can get it from his walk in his room and just smell it like, oh, oh, what is that? Walk out there and then he just, oh, my goodness, she, she looked good. Yep, he saw my wife there. She looked so good. But that's mine. Wait, wait, another time. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? My goodness, he even got a whole of who she is. The whole genealogy, thank you. She already, she has, she's, but she belongs to some. flesh 
The cares of this world, it, don't, it, it, it doesn't easily fall here. Men, if kids close ears, close ears, okay, close ears. This is a, if my wife wants to say, PK come, you know, it will be, the desire will be go. But this man was so dead to his flesh, it had no rule over him. He knew where he was supposed to be. He knew the position. He was trying to serve the one who put him in battle. The one who chose him for war. He wanted to. He wanted to do right. He wanted to serve well. Faithful. He didn't want to go down and sleep with his wife. You see, what your struggle is might not be my struggle. King David, that was his struggle. So he thought it would have been his struggle. Like, yo, what am I going to go? And I'm going to send food and wine and yeah, you and your wife are marry and he thought he was going to go sleep with his wife so that when the baby oh, come, they could blame, hey, oh, this is your child. And David going to be sitting in the kingdom watching this boy, knowing that that's his son. Yeah. You think God covers sin? Not at all. Not at all. Come on. You think you and God can work out a deal and, and God, because I'm a lion, cover this up so good? No. No. God, we can live like this. Can you imagine if that would have happened when we would have been reading about King David? Yeah. But thank God, God is a God of exposure. Let's expose this thing. Let's kill this seed before it germinate and it destroy the whole. What I'm trying to use you to do, man of God. I'm trying to let you be a man after my own heart, and that's what you're doing. What did we read just now in, in, in 2 Timothy? It says, we don't get entitled in so many ways. You see, that right there was a civilian of faith. Mm -hmm. This man, his mind was on war. Yeah. His mind was on doing and serving what he was supposed to be at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. To go sleep with my wife? Come on, how can I even concentrate when I know I'm supposed to be and I got people out there right now fighting? And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Comest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joah and the servants of my lord are encamped in, in the open fields. fields. Shall I then go into my house to, to eat, eat and to drink, drink, and to lie with my wife? My God, my God. As thou livest, and as thy soul, and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. My God. You see, when your mind is made up, made up my God. not even the king. My God. Oh my God. Not even the not king. Even when your mind is made up, oh, yeah. be obedient. You oh, see? Oh, All right. Yeah. Yes, it's King David. And he, you know, sometimes we hear he can't approach a king a certain way. But let me tell you something. When God has chosen you, you'll be able to speak to any power. You don't think, get grace. You don't think that King David was feeling inside himself like, like oh, You don't think King David was like, man, if I would have only had a heart like yours, I would have been where I was supposed to be. That thing convicted. His actions now convicted David. His actions convicted him without him even knowing. Because you're right, he's innocent. He didn't know King David did that to his wife. He's just serving the one who chose him for war. He slept at the door of the king. Because his mind is on war, battle.
And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah into a place where he knew. No, I believe you skipped something. Go back a little bit. Thank you. Go, go back. Not the way you started reading from. Because he made the try another way. He got him drunk. Let's go oh, back. Yeah. Exactly. And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab. And the servants of my Lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As thou livest and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also and tomorrow, and I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. So, so he even tried to get him drunk so he could go home because his wife was in on it. The wife sent the message to the king, hey, I'm with the child. What are we gonna do? David probably like, yeah, I'm gonna send him down with Trump. I'm gonna send him, I'm gonna send him down with Trump. So this is your opportunity. We're gonna cut off this so we can continue to live our best lives. God wants no part of our mess. When we do these things and we try to invite God and call it holy. God cannot dwell in that temple of mess. You have to first clean up house. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab. Why? Because a man of God did not budge. He said, I'm not even going to go home to my house because I don't even want to slip up. Because my mind is made up. So I'm going to sleep here with the servants on the servant bed. The heart of a servant, man, when you know, when you got instruction, soldier, when you got instruction, then you got you to gotta call it out to the team. You try not to make no mistakes. Why? Because you want to please the one that chose you for battle. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city, that he assigned Uriah into a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought him with Joab. And there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, and charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war unto the king, and if so, be that the king's wrath arise, and he said unto thee, Wherefore approach ye so nigh unto the city when ye did fight? Knew ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Abimelech, the son of Jehubba? Did not a woman cast a piece of a milestone upon him from the wall, that he died in Bethbed? Why went ye nigh the wall, when ye say thou, thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also? My God. So here he goes. Since I can't get him to sleep with his wife, let me send him to the hottest part of the battle. This was somebody close to King David. This wasn't just some regular soldier. 
For him to have a house so close to David, this was someone close that he could consider family. But sin. A made up mind to sin. You see, we got to understand as people, as children of God, that our mind needs to be renewed. We need renewed minds, especially in these evil times. Listen, I'm not perfect. Just the other day on my job, I saw some little white kids about to go fight. If that was happening in my neighborhood, I'll stop them. I'll walk in the fights and I'll whip girls off each other. Because I want to see us do better. I'm tired of seeing these videos with black on black. We just tear each other up and then laughing. So I'm not going to lie. When I saw the, the white kids, I was there like, the world needs to see this. Because y'all got this picture like if everything perfect. His shirt said savage. He walked in and went with a crowd and Watched him. The kid punched him, slammed him, and the kid started stomping him. That's when I, I said, No, no, stop, stop. But I'm there talking to God, like, God, why did I allow him? Like, what if he would have killed him with the first hit? Mm -hmm. I sat in that truck and I had to repent. Just because we can't allow the world and the, the evilness that's happening around change us. And the reason why I Mentally, I, I struggled because I saw the video with the two white kids who went into the house and they found AKs and shotguns and they were shooting at the police. Mm. And then we got black kids who get caught with a toy gun and they get destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. When these two white kids were like, oh, they were painted so, let's pray. The cops started praying. Let's back down, not shoot back. And because I'm black, I feel like you're. It's not, it's not, the, the, the battlefield is not, it's not equal. We have to work harder, we have to try harder to break that stigma. Yeah. So we just gotta be the one to do the right thing regardless whether it's white or black. Yeah. I can't make this, this 